Okay, today I'm going to show you how to get to the Forbidden Woods from the Grand Cathedral Bonfire. After defeating Vicar Amelia, your next uh, area in the quest in the uh, main story is to head to the Forbidden Woods. Um, your next mission as a hunter should actually be towards um, Hemwick Charnell Line, which is off that way to the right of the bonfire, the Grand Cathedral Bonfire. So, you'll want to head through a cave down there and enter another area of the Forbidden Woods called Hemwick Charnel, called Hemwick Charnel Line. And then, from there, you'll need to defeat the boss to get the, to get the, um, the rune tool. The rune tool is incredibly important because runes allow you to boost your um, your uh, stats. Like the Carol runes, I've got more echoes from slain enemies. Boosts max HP by 10%. Boosts max stamina. Stamina recovery speed up. That final one is actually an oath rune. Oath runes are received from uh, covenant leaders once you uh, complete the storyline or join their covenant per se. The only one that you can physically join, like given a choice and actually rank up in, is the Vile Blood Covenant. Um, the other two that I found are is Hunter of Hunters and the Executioners. The Hunters of Hunters, you have to do the, the quest line for Eileen the Crow. She's the uh, Crow NPC with the warped twin blades that you probably killed or were killed by in the beginning of the game. And then, um, the Executioners requires you to find the Canehurst, uh, Canehurst Castle, which is a part of, um, you'll need to be, you'll need to unlock a Hemwick Charnel line for that as well, actually. So, keep that in mind. Once you uh, join the Vile Bloods, you'll see an invitation on a little table over to the right of the queen. You'll want to give that uh, give that missive to Alfred. You saw me run past him on the way here. He's right on he's right on the way to uh, the Forbidden Woods. So keep that in mind for when you decide to play. Anywho, head up the thing and you'll find that uh, that headsman and some items in this cave. He'll drop blood vials or something. Yeah, he's definitely a headsman. <coughs> but what you're really going to want to do first is head down here and grab the lamp, if you can see it in the distance. You There's an item back here, guard Annoying. Annoying little pest. Antidote. Not actually helpful. Well, I mean, I guess it's helpful for the second part of this place. Since that is hell. Careful, there's a sh guy shooting on the side. And one of the biggest things you need to worry about in this area are traps. Uh, you can, you can barely see it up there, but when you run right through here, a trap comes down, but keep moving and come back, and if you back up, it'll at probably hit you as it rolls down the cliff. So just keep that in mind if you ever come through here. Very dangerous place. This next part is very tricky. Um, you can, you'll see that item down there, don't, don't go for it. You'll want to head up to the right here, and probably kill this guy, because he's annoying. And then you'll notice that there are a ton of enemies down there, including two dogs. But with the most annoying part are those two guys right about there, and there. They throw uh, oil urns at you. 
and as you can see a lot of the enemies here have torches and they will set you on fire and that is not fun you take a ton of damage anyway you can drop down here for little to no effort kill that guy head this way and you'll find one of the crawling heads and he'll drop in between the stone shells which is as you level up your weapons. Keep in mind, leveling up weapons is probably the second most important thing in this game. Um, you can head that way. That leads to a uh, sort of backwards drop-off, but that's not what I'm going to be showing you today. For this part, I'm going to show you a secret before I show you the rest of the, the, rest of the stage. See this gate. And this gate leads to that small village of uh, beasts, beastkin. What you're gonna want to do is head up here instead. Ignore the gate and head up the hill. Try not to jump down. There's also a cool item up here called Beast Roar. It's an arcane item. You need 15 arcane to use. Um, it's always fun to sl slaughter dogs. In the once you're done slaughtering the dogs, you can head this way, around this little corner, and you'll enter a cave. This cave is fun. Very fun. This is pretty much why you picked up Antidote earlier. Well, you'll pick up Antidote here as well, but you'll pick up Antidote later. Um, not later. You'll have to fight snake parasites later, and that's not fun at all. Like, the snakes themselves are easy, but the uh, walking snake parasites on them. So as you can see, this water is poisonous. So the longer you stand in it, the more build up you'll get. Which is unfortunate. But since you just picked up like five antidote on the way in here, that's nothing to worry about. You'll want to climb up this ladder. And just completely ignore everything in that cave because it'll it's all it's just got poison written all over it there are those two giants there are a couple uh twin bloodstone shards in there in case you're super desperate but there are also little uh leech things in there that will that are really hard to hit and they will attack you and they actually do quite a bit of damage so just be careful you'll be climbing up here and you will be in a magical place called Central Yarnum, and if you notice, I just picked up Cold Blue Dew 1, which doesn't make any sense, am I right? You'll open this gate, and, whoa, hey, we're back at Isofka's Clinic. Isn't that cool? Okay, so the fun part about this little area is that you'll get to go behind Isofka's door. And that's a great thing. Watch out for this guy. This guy will steal insight from you if you let him. So, they don't take a lot of physical damage, but I found the most efficient way to just hack and slash them to death. Because stun locking is the best. If you ever get the chance, you'll fight more of them later on. If in certain places, the best way to take care of them is simply a backstab. or run past the crows since they're really good, so if they're actually guarding it. No, they're not guarding anything. Uh, once you enter a Sophus clinic, you'll actually gain some insight. And one, the most important part, because you don't want to actually head back there yet, you'll open it up and find that someone was turned into a jellyfish. Poor, poor jellyfish. Hello. These are actually called celestial beings, I believe. And that's just my, okay, my uh, insight. But uh, you'll open the door, but the most important thing is sitting on this table right here. 
will be the Kanehurst summons. This allows you to to enter Kanehurst Castle and join the Vile Blood Covenant, allowing you to unlock some super awesome gear and stuff. But one of the big parts is um, if you try to head this way before um, the before you finish the uh, what do you call it ritual, the Pale Blood Moon ritual. By defeating Rom. Moonlit scent. How did you worm your way in here? Well, I won't make any excuses. Would you mind leaving us alone? But if you. Oh well. <laughs> Anywho, she'll ask you to leave, which in your in you it is probably the best idea for you right now because she's actually very hard to kill. She uses a Rosemar- I believe she uses a Rosemarius and a Threaded Cane. Um, but the most important part is that you're going to want to want to come back later, because if you do, she will drop a one-third of Umbilical Cord, and that's- you'll need three of those to, uh, unlock the secret ending by choosing Refuse at Caraman. So anyway, that concludes this part of the Forbidden Woods walkthrough. I'll see you guys later. Okay, part two of the uh, Forbidden Woods walkthrough. If you head down the path and fall down there, you'll end up in this place. And what you're going to want to do instead of fighting those guys, or, or heading straight through them because that will force you to fall, um, Normally you'll have that way, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to take a shortcut. Uh, for time restraints, rather. Because I had, uh, I thought I already had this video going, but, uh, turns out I was talking to myself the entire time. So that sucks. Um, I'm going to be attempting to show you what to do here. That's a snake parasite, be very careful with him. He's not a fun dude. You're gonna wanna fall down here. Actually, you know what? Just don't do anything I'm doing unless. I'm just going to show you a very dangerous NPC first. If you uh, accepted, if you uh, told him to go someplace then he would uh, inevitably kill all of the other NPCs in the area. At least for Odin Chapel. For um, Isofka's clinic, I don't know what happens. I imagine Isofka kills him, since I didn't get the choice to do that this time. I'm going to fight him again. Tactical retreat. This is called the coward's tactic. Be very careful when flying. Sense the weakness in it. Weakness of all these. Hide in a doorway. This is the problem with it, I'm going to die. 
be careful because he actually can fire at him. So don't just attack him with Don't just attack him with wild bandit. Interesting character, but he kills everyone. Apparently, he gives you the final beast rune. Temp beast for 50. Sweet. Okay, sorry I had to show you that. He would have killed me otherwise. Um, normally, you can go talk to him, do whatever, but the thing I'm going to show you here is the fact that there is a cannon. You can use a cannon in this game. It does 200 damage, but you need 30 strength and a dexterity to wield it. Um, this is a snake parasite. Be careful when fighting these guys; they're probably the most irritating mob in the game. Um, if you can backstab them, because you don't want to deal with these guys. And if you normally, and if you can land the first backstab, generally the second backstab is just as easy so long as you have a long range, <clears throat> a long range weapon like my scythe. Um, besides that, they're extremely dangerous. They, um, they have a grab attack that'll probably one shot you, and they simply do a lot of damage in general. Anyway, once you're through there, you can head up here and grab the elevator. The elevator leads back to the first lamp, which is what you're going to be using the entire time. That'll be the most common elevator you will ever come across in this game, probably. Wow, rude. Couldn't even fight me. Okay. Once you've unlocked that, you can head back down. And time to enter phase two of the Forbidden Wood. This place is full of secrets, and I honestly have yet to find them. Because this place is so dangerous that I just don't even care. But <clears throat> this is probably this is where the game starts getting uh, extra difficult for all you guys who are worried about difficulty. So, be careful, like always. We have these little riding snake peeps that don't make any snake sense. They don't make any sense. I was told about an armor setting out of here. There's supposed to be an armor set where you have to jump across a gap if you ha hug the left it, the left hand. I'm gonna try and find it. It's called the Grave Guard set. Um, it closely resembles the um, the uh, what was that set in Dark Souls? The red one. The crimson set. Well. Hmm. I don't think it's down there. But I don't know down there. And we will find out. I don't think it's down here, but we'll go down here and find out. Two twin blood shards. Ooh, what's that? I think that might be it. Okay. Oh god. Oh, the best part about the there is an even giant snake. That's big for me. 
you don't think that's just the coolest shit ever? I'm kidding, I don't think it's the coolest shit ever either. Anyways, I think I just found the area that leads to the graveyard set. Well, I found the graveyard mask. Well, there's the rest of it. Interesting. I believe that allows you to bypass at least... Yeah, that lets you bypass eight-tenths of this area. That's pretty nice. Anywho, once you're done there, grabbing that armor set, you're going to want to head this way. You'll see the fireflies. Those are all pretty and nice. You're going to want to take a right. Taking a right will lead to a snake parasite. He guards this shortcut. This shortcut leads back to that building that I fought the uh, lightning werewolf on top of. Oh, look. Remember this place? I certainly do. You gotta love those uh, cape physics, though. That was probably the most unusual thing I've seen. Other than my capes disappearing, of course, but sometimes that makes the set look even cooler. Anywho, <clears throat> after this, I'm going to show you guys where the uh, old Yarnum, the Shadows of Yarnum fight is. So, stay tuned. Get to the Shadows of Yarnum fight once you've unlocked the, uh, the two shortcuts that I previously mentioned earlier video. To get to the uh, second shortcut, once you unlocked it from the lamp, you're going to want to head to the head down and straight to the left. Just ignore the, the uh, snake parasite because honestly, no one wants to deal with that guy. And then you'll find the elevator right here. Ignore Snake Parasite because they are just too hard to kill. They're not worth the effort. Over there leads to some jellyfish. They're not useful at all. If you feel like killing a pig with a frostbite exam or something, just you know, do it. Um, besides that, let's see. That doesn't lead anywhere I want it to. I didn't put it there, and I don't know why it keeps appearing there. Take a panic. Like this is what I Get over here. Anywho, normally you can just skip him by going under these roofs with the other others. Then you can head this way through here. Unfortunately, this pig is unskippable. Uh, so you're gonna want to climb. And of course, as pigs go, they do a stupid screw before they even stop you, so just use that time to get behind them. And Grab those blood vials, because you are gonna need them. Okay, that way leads to the boss fight, but first, we're gonna go up here. Because for some reason, From Software decided to put a shortcut from the least visited area over here. Like, I don't even know how to get there from the uh, shortcut that we took here. 
so without backtracking through like 37 gigantic snakes so <clears throat> just follow the path with the pigs for now and then we'll run through here and you'll find the shadows of Yarnum. we have flaming mcgee swordy and sword with candle guy If you're doing this alone, your best bet is to uh, probably focus on Sword Guy first. Hide behind the wall. Smash him up real good. Make sure to not be in the range of fireball. Candle Dude's not too. If you get close to Candle Dude, all he'll ever do is uh, dodge. And visceral attacks obviously work the best on this guy because they make you invulnerable. You got it at the right moment, you can just kill that guy. Now you can decide who to kill first now. Um, I usually go for Candle Dude, but um, be very careful when uh, when choosing who to kill last because the last one will begin to summon gigantic snakes to attack you. So your best bet when fighting them most likely would probably end up being um, almost kill one. Then uh, focus on the other one. See that dodge? That was perfect. Magic, right? That didn't do any damage because he got knocked over. Right. Snake arm too. Try to keep the other shadow away. Oh boy. Thanks for already here. Try to stick near this guy because these guys have no poise whatsoever, so you can just smack him around with real good. I believe they give you something else other than Madman's knowledge at the beginning, but now that you've beaten them, you can head to Bergenworth.